Have you seen statues of Lady Justice? If you have, you can't miss the blindfold. It is supposed to depict lack of bias. Justice is delivered based on facts and fairness, not outside factors. But only in theory, it seems, because Lady Justice will open the blindfold sometimes when she hears the cash registers ringing. What do I mean? Well, over the weekend, there was some interesting development at the Supreme Court of India. Now, Saturday was a court holiday, but the judges convened twice for one particular case. It's a case that relates to an activist called Tista Setalwar. She's accused of fabricating evidence in the 2002 Gujarat riots. I'll sum up the events quickly. The High Court in Gujarat rejected her bail plea. So Setalwar moved the Supreme Court. The judges convened twice for her case, once at 6.40 p.m. in the evening and then again at 9.15 p.m. in the night. They granted her interim protection for seven days. Now, the case itself is very polarizing. I'm sure all of you have your own opinions on it, and I do not want to go there. What I want to focus on is this. What does it take to secure justice? What does it take to get the court's attention? It helps if you're powerful and famous. And there is no ideological or political distinction here. Just think back to some recent cases. If you're a politician, you get the court's attention. Your bail hearings get fast-tracked. If you're related to celebrities, say a son or daughter, you get a fast track. If you have a top lawyer, same thing. Some big names in India charge up to anywhere between 15 and 20 lakh rupees. That's around 18,000 US dollars. I'm sure they're legal hawks and their services are probably worth every penny. But surely that should not affect the speed of justice. And how early the court takes up your case. I have some staggering numbers for you. Around 77% of prisoners in India are under trials, meaning they're in jail, but their trial has not started, 77%. That's more than 420,000 people. Who do you think these prisoners are? I'll tell you who they're not. They're not corrupt politicians and bureaucrats. They're not celebrities. They're not well-paid TV personalities either. They're ordinary citizens with no connections or power. Around 60% of them are Dalits and tribal, 60% of them. They don't have access to well-paid lawyers, hence their cases get delayed. Another staggering number is the pending cases, around 50 million of them across Indian courts. 50 million pending cases. Can you imagine that? In this judicial pile, the ordinary citizens come last. They wait years, sometimes decades for justice. But your VIPs don't. They will have expensive lawyers on call and those lawyers will have the court's attention. It is an unfair system and the courts know of it. The Supreme Court of India has tried to remedy the under-trial and pendency issues. They've given new orders to lower courts, like to prioritize bail over jail. But at the ground level, things are yet to change. The court can work on a holiday for an activist with a top lawyer, but will it do so for the four lakh plus under-trials? I think we know the answer. This problem isn't about one case or one ideology or one political party. It's a question of basic freedoms and liberty. India has a rich tradition of justice and fairness. Our courts, led by the Supreme Court, have upheld that tradition. Yet there are gaps to fill. A fat wallet cannot be an early guarantee of justice. Neither can pr due process be expedited for the influential. I'm sure the top court knows this already. But it's all about putting the wheels in motion.